The internet is going to go down. It's not a matter of if, but when. And when it happens, you are going to lose all your access to information. There are things, however, that you can do right now that are super quick, easy, and cheap, that if you take these steps right now, you are going to guarantee that you won't fall into that total black hole of not knowing what's going on. We're gonna talk about the most potent thing that you can do right now in this video. So stick around. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. I think one of the biggest challenges that many people are going to face as we move into whatever the future might hold is an access to communication and information. These are things that I think most of us take for granted today. We take for granted the idea that you can connect with a family member or a friend anywhere, in any state or anywhere in the world really in a matter of seconds using your phone. And the same goes for pretty much all the knowledge of humankind. We have the access to the internet and we can look up pretty much anything that we want to with just a few keystrokes and many of us keep that access right in our pocket on our phone as well. I think a lot of people don't appreciate the power that we have today, but all that power could really be turned off at the flip of a switch if the major nation states of the world continue down the road that they're going towards war with each other, one of the early things that's going to be targeted during any kind of a conflict is going to be uh, critical infrastructure and communications. And if communications are turned off, they are going to essentially plunge you into a black hole and you won't know what's going on. And that's a very unsettling feeling to be in. So to try to compensate for that, there are things that you can do that don't rely on a lot of these modern technologies that people rely on today. And one of them is shortwave radio. For the past several months, I've been setting up my fallout shelter, and one thing that I wanted to make sure I had access to in my fallout shelter is communication. Now, I have internet going in there, and I think if there were any kind of a war or reason for being in that fallout shelter, internet pro would probably be one of the first things to suffer, but I ran it in there anyway because it was easy. But two other things that I ran in there were FM radio and shortwave radio lines. And I think that's really important to be able to pick up information that's you know traveling right through the air so that you can have some sense of what's going on around you. For the example of being in my fallout shelter, wouldn't it be nice for me to find out if the whole thing was just a false alarm and nothing had even happened so I can, you know, emerge early? Maybe it would be good to find out, you know, that, uh, you know, something's happening and I'm about to go from the firing pan into the fire if I don't get out of there. It's really important to just know what's going on around you. I've built FM radio antennas in the past. Now, I don't know very much about radio uh, you know, physics or you know, uh, you know, frequencies or any of that kind of stuff. I'm very green when it comes to all that. But I'm a big fan of kind of jumping into things. And as long as they don't cost too much money and they're not dangerous, you know, having some trial and error and kind of learning about things that way. I built a really, really nice FM radio antenna in the past. It was a fairly complicated uh, procedure. I used a coaxial wire. A coaxial wire has uh, two uh, different uh, electrical leads inside, and there's this delicate ballet between the different uh, leads where one connects to one place and they go for a certain length and then they kind of get soldered here and there and everywhere. Anyway, I made a really nice FM radio antenna. I can suggest you give it a try if you're interested. Uh, you could just do a search here on YouTube for dipole uh, coaxial uh, FM antenna. You can find out how to do it there and it's a really interesting project to do. But what I wanted to do is make a shortwave radio antenna because the nice thing about shortwave radio is that where FM uh, radio is very clear, it has a fairly limited range. Uh, you know, you have to be within uh, you know a certain distance of a, an FM radio transmitter to really get that signal. But uh, shortwave radio is not that way. Shortwave radio is really good at traveling all around the planet in the same way that our modern communications networks can you know connect you with uh, you know a friend or a family member on the other side of the world. Shortwave radio can really do that because it's able to kind of ricochet. Uh, across the, uh, I think it's the, I, I think it's the ionosphere uh, layer of the uh, the atmosphere. I'm not sure about that. Again, I'm pretty green about all this stuff. But the idea is it kind of ricochets along the atmosphere, so it can go from one side of the planet to the other, and it travels really, really long distances. So it's a really great asset to have. Now, when I was trying to set up for my shortwave radio, I uh, got a, a receiver, I ran all the lines down into the fallout shelter, and then I started trying to build a antenna. And I made the mistake of trying to build the antenna in the same way that I would built the FM antenna. Now, if you know anything about shortwave radio, you're probably already thinking, well, practice, that was really stupid, that's not the way to do it. I know that now. Uh, it was a valuable experiment in that it, it educated me about how not to build a shortwave radio antenna. And in this video, what I want to share with you is how to build a shortwave 
shortwave radio antenna. And here's a little spoiler alert. It's really, really easy. Where the FM radio antenna I mentioned was kind of a delicate ballet of all the different wires going here and there and everywhere. If you uh, maybe get a little bit frightened by the idea of something that complex, a shortwave radio antenna is super, super easy. It was kind of like I needed a paper airplane and I was building myself a Bugatti. Uh, you know, one of them's really great, but it, it doesn't fly. So. Uh, that is what we're going to talk about in this video, is how to build your own shortwave radio antenna that you can hook into a shortwave radio receiver. So if you would like to do this, <clears throat> first, get yourself a shortwave radio receiver. I would suggest one that has a coaxial input in the back so that you can uh, listen to it from a safe place where, you know, you're not necessarily going to have access to good radio waves. If you were in a fallout shelter or something like that, you know, you're not necessarily going to be getting good radio frequencies in there. So you're going to want to bring those radio frequencies uh, into your shelter. So I would suggest getting a shortwave radio receiver with some kind of co coaxial input in the back. I'm going to put a link down in the description below to the one that I got. This one seems to work pretty well. There, I'm sure are, very, are other ones. Maybe there are some that are better than this. Uh, but this one seems to work pretty well for me. It came from a, a brand that I have gotten other stuff from and they seem like you know they, they make good stuff so I'm, I'm fairly happy with that if you have any suggestions uh, of different receivers that you would suggest that have a coaxial input in the back definitely please put those in the links below because uh, I'm sorry but in the comments below because I'm sure people would be interested in your thoughts as well so let's uh, cut to the chase and how do you make a antenna for a shortwave radio receiver. Now, there are lots of different ways, and what I'm gonna describe here is not necessarily the best way. It's probably not the best way, but it works really, really well. And uh, if just getting, I always think this is really important with prepping and preparedness is so many people stumble over the idea that they, they wanna do something perfect. I want the best, so, you know, what's the ultimate survival knife or, or this or that, and they, they get blinded by the chase and the search for the ultimate X, Y, or Z, that they failed to ever really do anything. So what I'm going to describe here is how to make a really good shortwave ant antenna that's really simple to make and super cheap. So that you can just get going with it. So you got at least something and then you can spend the next 10 months trying to figure out what the ultimate way of doing it is. But in the meantime, you at least got something that works pretty well. So the first thing you want to do is get yourself a piece of coaxial cable. Now coaxial cable is what you might recognize as like the, uh, the wire that brings uh, internet and cable into your house. Uh, it has a central a wire right in the middle, and then it has another wire that you, you don't really notice, uh, but it's a, uh, a shielding that kind of goes along the inside. It's a braiding of wire. So you've got two electrical contacts. One is the central core that you can kind of see, and the other one is the braiding, which actually connects to the, this part that you do see. This is part of the uh, electrical connection here is the little thing that you screw on. That's not just a physical connection. That's also a, an electronic connection. So you've got a piece of coaxial cable. I just got a short piece like this. It's like four feet long, and uh, what, do, what do you do with that? Well, one of these ends is gonna screw into the back of your radio receiver. The other end, you're just gonna clip the end off. And I can just take this off right now and show you guys kind of what, what's going on in here. Uh, the great thing about setting up a, uh, a shortwave radio antenna is it's so incredibly simple. Like I mentioned, the, the FM radio antenna is this like ballet of all these wires, and all you need to do all you need to do to set up for a shortwave radio antenna is all the uh, that braiding that's on the outside. You, once you clip the cable, you have the central wire that comes out the top, and you get the, all the braiding around the outside. Take that braiding and just kind of pull it back. And the point is, you just don't want the braiding to touch that central wire. It doesn't naturally touch it anyway because there's like a, kind of an insulating core in there to keep the two separate from each other. But when you cut through, they have the, the risk of touching each other. So you want to what you want to do is cut through and then uh, pull that braiding back. Uh, you know, just and a little bit, uh, just so it, it's not going to ever touch the inside of the wire. And then take some electrical tape or, or some kind of uh, something that's not conductive and wrap it around that braiding just to isolate it so it, it doesn't get into the equation. The next thing you do is you just take any random piece of wire. It could be anything. I've literally uh, read that people have uh, done this just with um, some barbed wire. They like hook this thing up to a barbed wire fence and use the barbed wire as their antenna. But just get any kind of wire. What I got ha here uh, is it's like a, a 14 gauge uh, braided wire. I found this in a dumpster somewhere. I just found a spool of wire someone had thrown out in a dumpster. I never used it and I was like, oh, that, that, that's what I'm gonna try for this experiment. You take that and you just solder it to the core wire. And that's it. <laughs> that's it. You've created the antenna at that point. So all you do, snip one end off, pull the braiding back, tape it down so it doesn't touch, touch the center wire, and then solder any kind of wire to that central core wire, and there you got an antenna. All the rest is just kind of putting the antenna up. But that, that, is, that is literally all there is to it. I took some electrical tape and I just kind of covered this area up, 
after I was done with that. I don't know that you necessarily must uh, solder the two together. I guess if you if you had enough of that central core wire and you wanted to try your hand at just uh, maybe uh, you know braiding them together, I'm, I'm sure that you could get that to work. I, I just chose the soldering because it's a really nice electrical connection and it is going to uh, you know it's going to be a nice firm hold on there. But that's really all there is to it. I would suggest maybe uh, right here maybe taking a couple of zip ties. I, I haven't done it yet, but take a couple of zip ties and just uh, clinch it right there so if this thing starts pulling you're not pulling on your electrical connection but actually if I was going to do that I think I would double it up like that and kind of double it back like that and then put the zip ties across it so it's uh, you got a straight line that pulls like that but that's it uh, after that all I did is I just took this wire and I ran it off into the forest I just went to one tree wrapped it around went to another tree wrapped it around went to another tree wrapped it around and I just kept going until I ran out of wire there's probably almost a hundred feet of wire that go back in there. I bet that the way that I wrapped around the tree is probably deleterious to the performance of the antenna, but even doing it that way, it works pretty darn well. My plan at some point is to just kind of get it uh, up and, you know, kind of dangling so it doesn't have any of those, uh, those twists in it and maybe like make some cradles to kind of hold it tree to tree. One thing you want to make sure of is that you don't um, attach it so firmly to trees that when they, when they blow, they tear your wire apart. So you want to have it kind of uh, able to drift uh, and ac accommodate for the idea that, you know, you may attach it to two trees and I guess normally, you know, the wind would blow them at the same time, but maybe the wind just blows one of the trees and then it just tears your wire apart. So you want to have some of that flexibility built into it. And beyond that, you want to just kind of get it out going across the ground as high as you conveniently can get it. Now, what I plan to do with this is I want to reset it up higher up. I'm going to use a ladder to go up the tree and I'll probably go up like, you know, 10 or 15 feet off the ground and kind of do the same thing that I got here. But this is really it. This is all you need to do to get a really good antenna. Buy yourself a receiver with a coaxial input in the back. Get yourself a short piece of just scrap uh, coaxial cable. Cut off one of the ends. Pull back the shielding. Tape it all back so it's, it's isolated. Solder any kind of a wire to the core wire and run the wire off into the woods or you know any, anywhere. You want to get it up off the ground as best you can. But other than that, that's all you need to do to get something going so that if there was ever a situation, and it's looking, unfortunately, like there probably is going to be. I don't see either of the parties backing down at the moment, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, this conflict that's, uh, you know, kind of brewing between East and West, uh, you know, Nobody is suggesting that they are going to be the ones that are just going to turn tail and run in this conflict. Uh, so uh, the alternative uh, to you know one side giving up is for people to either uh, talk things out, which um, we had a lot of opportunities to do that and it never happened, or to uh, you know fight through this thing until people just get tired of all the death and the bloodshed of you know their family members and friends dying, and then people decide to talk about it. Ultimately, people are going to de decide to to um, Compromise. Ultimately, people are going to decide to talk this uh, this thing over. Um, it's just a matter of how many people we want to see die first before that happens. And it's unfortunate. That's the way that humans usually do it. And I think that's going to be the way they do it now because people today are pretty much the same as people have always been. I think a lot of times people like to think that, you know, today we're exceptional and different and better than any people from any part of the world that have ever existed before. Um, that seems, I don't know, a little arrogant in my opinion. And uh, that arrogance, I think, is going to get tons and tons of people killed because we somehow think that it won't happen to us. I think it's going to happen to us, unfortunately. And when it starts happening, if you don't want to be plunged into a total black hole of no communications, start thinking about this stuff early. Get yourself a shortwave radio receiver. I'd suggest one that can also do FM, uh, so you can kind of do both of them. The, the one that I have down in the description below can do FM as well. Uh, and, you know, set yourself up some ability to start getting some information. And because information is super, super critical. We think of it as like oxygen today. It's like you take for granted. You can take a breath and the air is going to be there for you. Uh, but just imagine if suddenly the air wasn't there for you, what that's going to feel like. And it's going to be similar, though not to the same degree, uh, you know, that, that, that feeling of panic that you get when suddenly you want to get information and things like this aren't there anymore. That's it. Good luck. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.